Here we've got a question that says, in a restaurant, there are three starters and four main courses available. How many combinations, how many combinations of food are available? So we could list all of the possible options. So if we pick starter one, we could pick main one to go with it, or we could pick main two to go with it, or we could pick main three to go with it, or we could pick main four to go with it. If we pick starter two, we could pick main one, main two, main three, or main four to go with it. And if we pick starter three, we could pick main one, main two, main three, or main four to go with it. So what we've got here is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve different options. So twelve different combinations available. But the product rule for counting is the quick way of working this out. So product means multiplication. So it's using multiplication to add these up quickly. So if there are three starters and four main courses, for each starter, for each of the starters, there are four options. So three times four gives us the 12. So we can use multiplication, the product rule, to add these up quickly. So here's a question for you to try. There are 10 boys and 12 girls in a class. One boy and one girl are going to be selected for the student council. How many different pairs could be chosen? So there are 10 different boys. And for each of those 10 boys, there are 12 pairs available, 12 different girls to be chosen available. So for each of the 10 boys, there are 12 options. So 10 times 12 is 120. So there are 120 different pairs that could be chosen. Here we've got a slightly different question. There are five tennis players in a group. Two are going to be selected at random to play a match against each other. How many different possible matches could take place? So we could have, so we've got player one, player two, player three, player four and player five. We could pick tennis player one out first and they could be matched against player two. We could pick one and then three, one of them four, and one of them five. We could pick two first and then one. We could pick two and then three, two of them four, and two of them five. We could pick three first and then one, Three, then two. Three, then four. And three, and then five. We could pick player four first, and then one. Four, and then two. Player four against player three. Player four, then player five. And we could pick five first, and then one. Five against two. Five against three and five against four. So for each of the five players we've got, there are four possible matches. So each of the five tennis players could play against four different players. So that's five times four, which is 20 different options we've listed here. However, we have doubles in here. So we have duplicates. So tennis player one and tennis player two and tennis player two and tennis player one. 
So the question is how many different possible matches could take place? And this is the same match. And you'll find every one, so tennis player one against tennis player three, and three against one. So every one has got a duplicate. So what we actually need to do is half our answer. So if we half our answer, that gives us 10 different possible matches. So try this question. There are eight people in a room. Each person shakes each other person's hand once. How many handshakes will take place? So there are eight people and they are all going to shake hands with seven other people. So every one person is going to shake seven people's hand. So it's eight times seven which is 56. Now we've got the same issue we had with the tennis players in the last question. So do we want to half this number? So if person A shakes hands with person B, do we also want to count person B shaking hands with person A? We don't. So we are going to half this number. So 56 divided by 2 is 28. So that's 28 different handshakes. Okay, to finish up two questions, so pause the video, give them a go, and press play when you're ready for the answers. Question one, Billy has six shirts and three ties. How many different combinations of shirt and tie could Billy choose? So there's six shirts. For each shirt, there are three options, three ties to go with it. So six times three is 18 different combinations. Question two. There are 10 people in a raffle. One person will be selected to win first prize and one will be selected to win second prize. How many different combinations of people could win the prizes? So if we're picking someone to win the first prize, there are 10 people we could choose from. And I'm going to assume the same person can't win first prize and second prize. They've only got one raffle ticket each. So after someone's won first prize, there are only nine people left to choose from for second prize. So that's 10 times nine, which is 90 different combinations. So do we want to half this one? So is person A winning first prize and person B winning second prize the same as person B winning first prize and person A winning second prize? It's not, it's not the same. So we don't have duplicates here, so we're not going to half it. So we're going to keep it as 90. And that is how many different combinations of people could win the prizes.